Pastor Junior Tucker from Family Word and Worship Church. Oh, bless God. It's been a very interesting day, very eventful day, a very um, uh, day of a lot of stuff going on and a lot of you know, meetings and different things to do with Pastor, to be honest with you. I'm not feeling too well today, but I'm going to try and do my best. Pray me up if you, if you feel led to do so. I would really appreciate your prayers. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm good. I'm feeling really good. I'm in the fog. Amen. Are you in the fog? What are we talking about? We're talking about the favor of God. If you're in the fog, just type yes. Come on, I need you to jump in. Family Word and Worship Church, come on. Tell your friends. You know, Send a message out to your friends. Tell them to come on and let's talk about it. We're talking about the favor of God and, you know, God has been talking to us for about, uh, well, he's been talking to me for a, a couple of months, actually, um, before I uh, started preaching it three weeks ago. Um, he was just dealing with me about the fog, about the favor of God, and which, which was, to be honest with you, um, something that I learned from, um, let's see, maybe, uh, wow, eight years, maybe 10 years ago. Probably it's probably more than that though. Um, when I was um, serving under Bishop Tony Miller and his ministry called Destiny World Outreach, which has a couple of churches, and I served in two of the churches. I served in one in, in Clouston, Florida, under under uh, Pastor Ch uh, Pastor Chuck Pelham and his wife, and um, and then we moved. Trudy and I and the family moved to Oklahoma to be directly with Bishop on a daily basis when he had taken over the church in, 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 um, in Oklahoma City, um, called the Cathedral at the time, now it's called the Gate. Um, we served there for two years, and um, then I came back to Florida, and then back to Jamaica where I am today. So it was in, during that time, I learned about this thing called the fog, the favor of God, walking in the favor of God, and um, learned it, you know, I was living it in some ways in terms of, um, I mean, I would apply it, and you know, um, think about it, you know, in my life. And, but to be honest with you, I kind of just, you know, just, was just doing my thing in terms of doing what I, you know, was hearing God say for me to do. And that's fine. Then you have to, you know, where, right where you're at, deal with the situation you're dealing with at this, at the moment. And um, I just remember, um, you know, going through that and, um, you know, the Lord just spoke to me, which was very, very um, shocking to me because the Lord spoke to me about the favor of God right in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, we are, you know, in a pandemic, which means people are losing jobs. People are, you know, the economy is, is not steady. And it's, and this time it's the world economy. I mean, it's like, you know, everybody's just waiting to see what's going to happen. Some of us are even thinking we won't go back to normal. Our normal is gone, you know. And um, so if that's the case. What are we going to do? You know, how do I, you know, think about favor at this time or, or, or being blessed? I just want to survive. You know, past if I could just survive, if I could just, you know, if God would just let this go away from us, you know, kind of a thing. So we're kind of, we're not careful uh, managing the crisis, managing the hit, I like to call it. Yet God speaks to me and says, teach the church about the fog. And I'm like, what? You know, so. But it's, it's interesting. I have been living it. I know people in my church who are living in it. And some even came to me and said, boy, Pastor, I thank you for, 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 for preaching that because I understood it. I, I couldn't believe that I was being blessed at a time when, um, you know, it seems like, I'm, you know, we're supposed to be in trouble. We're supposed to lay down and just hope that God passes, passes over us and the enemy does not devour us. And, and somebody might be thinking right now, looking at me and saying, what are you talking about when you talk about favor? What is, what is favor? Maybe you're jumping on for the first time and you're wondering, what is, what is this favor? What is, what is, what, when you talk about favor, oh, you prosperity preachers only talk about money when you talk about favor. It's not what I'm talking about. Um, favor is a very broad subject and I'm going to try my very best today to go through the three sermons real quickly as in terms of like just the, um, the, the points um, to kind of give you the perspective, kind of give you a, um, you know, the, 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 the walk of the land, so to speak, the, the plan, the, you know, the blueprint of what we've been dealing with, um, this thing of favor. Um, favor is wide, favor is deep, favor, favor is, let me, let me say this, favor is financial blessings, favor is, no apologies for that, okay? Favor is tangible 
finances that each believer, each truth speaking, stop not in the pretentiousness kind of a foolishness, but you just talk the truth, live the truth, and just be upfront about it. Every believer needs money. The Bible did not say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. So that tells me then, however, we still do need money. Just don't let money get you. Don't let money have you. But you need to have money to, to live and to do and to be a blessing. And so speaking of that, let's go to our root, um, our root verse. There's a, a passage of scripture um, in, um, in uh, you know, Psalms 90. Yes, Psalms 90, um, well, we've been kind of uh, dealing with. If you're joining us for the first time, let me just go through it real quickly again. Psalms 90 verse 13 says, Relent, Lord, how long will it be? This is actually Moses speaking to God before he goes to lead the children of Israel, right? And he says to them, they're on a break, kind of, so to speak. It's like they're in a bad place. They've just come through some things and he's, People are weary, they're crying, they're, they're, they're really discouraged. And he goes to speak to God about them. And this is what he came back with. He said, relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. That we may sing for joy and be glad for all our days. Amen? All our days, not in the afterlife, not in heaven. But he's talking about the current life that they were living. Amen? Verse 15, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. In other words, we have gone through affliction. You've allowed it to happen to us. And he's asking him now to make the gladness of the people be as long as the affliction, the days of affliction. Right? For as many as have we have been seeing trouble, may your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to your children. And then verse 17 is the one that we've been hanging our hats on, so to speak. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of, of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And like I've been saying to you, favor is money. Favor is blessings. Favor is tangible things that you need. Amen? But it's much broader than that. Um, favor is mercy. That's one of the, the words that um, you look and you see favor in the Bible. It has many meanings. Sometimes the word mercy is the same word as favor. Sometimes the word um, grace is the same word as favor. Amen. Um, so mercy, mercy really means, is the word kesed, or ke, ke, kesed, which means goodness, kindness, favor. That word favor there, if you look up that, if you click on that word and look on it, where it says favor on the, on the, on the kesed, then favor now leads you to the word uh, kanan. Kanan means to show favor, to be gracious, and it means adornment. In other words, it is something that is put on you, something that you wear. So, it, so we're not talking something inside your spirit. If it's an adornment, if it is something that is upon you, then people can see it. Now, what does that mean? Let me go, for, for, um, let me go a little bit further with this. Favor then means, okay, I can be a man who's walking in favor. What does that mean? I have an exceedingly, just a, 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 sometimes it looks like I, I have this, what you call it, abundance or a, a stronger walk in terms of tapping into wisdom that other men may scratch the surface of it, but I just seem to have wisdom beyond my years. If you've met anybody like that, I can tell you of one person in particular that I know is a good friend of mine, Pastor Kevin Thomas. Pastor Kevin is one of those people that in a group of us, we'll be in a room, pastors or friends or whatever, men of God. And, you know, you just... We're trying to work something out or the church is trying to work something out. And Pastor Kevin will just sit still for a second and just come back and go, this, 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 that, do that. And it's not Bible as in to say, you know, Psalms, you know, 23 verse, whatever. It's not, so it's not like you can say he studied the word and he has had theological knowledge. It's, it's divinely drawn down where you can know where did he get that from? How does he just readily tap into that? That's favor. That's the favor. God has given him wisdom. And that's his gift. That's his what he walks in that. Amen. And you know, it doesn't mean that you know we're stupid, he's super sharp. It's just that that's the gift that God gives him. So this thing of favor is a broad thing. Some people have favor, they just have an, an ability to just talk to people and just 
form friendships. See what you got, people? They walk in a room and they're just the friendliest person, and people just know them. And everywhere they're going to know somebody. And you're like, can you? I need somebody to come. So hold on. Carl Johnson so met him, and I had a connection with him. Favor is divine connections. Amen, somebody? Favor is uh, peace. Some people just have a peace that just goes beyond a certain threshold that you and I would say, no, I'm, I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. This, I can't. And they just seem to just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving because they have the favor of God on them that gives them a particular peace, a particular endurance, a particular uh, tenacity. Uh, you know, all of these things are, are favor. And it is when God for a moment in time uh, you know, Pastor Chuck, that I mentioned earlier, you know, up from where I, uh, I, you know, was serving with them, used to talk about this a lot, and I never forget it. Used to talk about, the, 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 you know, the Kronos time where you're doing things regular. Every day you wake up, your devotion time with the Lord, you're studying the Word, having, you know, bread from from heaven, right? That's Kronos, right? Then there's the Kairos moment, which is a moment now when God drops something on you. And you just know, oh my God, this is an interruption of something that is like, it, it, it does boost you to move faster for a, a particular season and lets you accomplish something that if in the natural, if you were doing it, even with God's help, it would, it would take a longer time. But something just comes to just give you that boost. It's like, a, it's favor. It's God interrupting the natural flow of man and saying, here's something extra. That man looking on would say, wait a minute, that's not fair. How do you do that? How did you get into that situation when everybody was trying to get it and can't get it? Somebody shall favor. Somebody shall favor. Hallelujah. Favor, 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 favor. Love it. And we've been walking in it. It belongs to us. The Bible tells us we can have it. Moses asked for it a while ago and God did give it to him. Amen, somebody? God did give it to the children of Israel. So let's go over um, you know, the three different sermons that we have, pre we have preached and been sharing for the past three weeks. Before I go any further with that, while I'm doing this, what I want to happen today, I really want, you know, I've said it before, guys, I want to hear from you, I want to hear from you. And you send me a couple of questions at the end and we get maybe the last 10 minutes, not today. I really want to hear from you. Family Word and Worship, you need to come on in. I need you to log in so that I can see you or send me a message. I prefer you log in. Just, just, just log in into, into our... Um, into our what well, we have Zoom. If you need, if you need the the, the, the address for the Zoom uh, to come on in, you know, just you know, just, just give us a shout. Our number is 876-539-1050. Yeah. Amen. And we're on Facebook, we're on uh, YouTube and Instagram, all that all that good stuff. Send us a message, you know, um, you know, send us a message. Family family word on worship, um, church, church people, church members, I need to hear from you today. Pastor is saying to you, come on, jump on in, don't be shy. When you say pastor, you talk off pastor head, you ask pastor every question, but now we're in the, you know, the medium to share what we, what we know and the questions we may have. Don't be shy about it. Come on in. Help me preach this evening. Amen. Come on, somebody. I need to hear from you. The first one, uh, which was the first sermon, I think the title of it was um, Step Into the Fog, Step Into the Favor of God. The first thing I said was favor can be found on a person, a place, and a people, right? Favor can be found on a person, a place, and a people. What do I mean by that? Favor can be found on, like I, like I said to you, there's a particular time, you're walking with your friends, everybody in church, and you just realize that this one person in particular just keep getting favor. You just see them testifying and say, God did this, God did that. And then, so for this particular time, there's a particular favor that just rests on that person. Don't get jealous. Don't think God has left you because there will be a time when you will be making a testimony like that. As a matter of fact, you may have a different testimony, but you're watching that person's testimony and thinking God is blessing them, but not blessing me. Because since you know that favor comes in all different sizes and you know, shapes and, and packages and all kind of stuff, then you know, what is favor really then? Favor is something that drops on us, but sometimes we see bigger things happen to somebody or more tangible stuff that, you know, gets everybody's attention and we feel like oh they have favor and i don't no no no. favor is when god drops something on you that you know you didn't do that yourself this is the ability and the blessing of god being poured out on you to enable you to do something that you could not naturally do by yourself amen and this favor drops on a person you know he got said it to me 
Pastor, you have favor on you. The way you handle the word, the way you preach the word. We know you're walking with God. There's favor upon your life. Um, <clears throat> to start a church uh, in, in 2015, and then here we are, you know, 2020, and, you know, we're, we're doing very well in terms of attendance and people calling it their homes, and their home church and people, lives being changed. That's favor, if you ask me. That's favor. That's not Junior Tucker. Junior Tucker don't do that. Um, I can't do that. That's God pouring out his favor. Not only his anointing, but his favor. Favor which makes you get things from people, meaning people would say, Pastor, I feel this in my heart. Let's do this. Let's buy the instruments. Let's, 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 let's pay for so and so. And the church just keeps moving. Like, in other words, whatever you put your hand to do, it just gets blessed. Amen? Favor is on a man. Favor is, is on myself and Pastor Trudy as the pastors of the church. Favor is on a place. Favor is on a, a place. Um, with Ruth in the Bible, in Ruth chapter 2, she could, she could tell that this field, Boaz's field, was blessed. She went there and she said, listen, you know, I, I'm going to glean from this particular field. Why didn't she go to another field? Why didn't she go somewhere else? Why didn't she go, why didn't she go to, I don't know, somebody else? She, she went there because she realized that something was going on with this field. Remember, they were going through a bad time and she just lost her husband and Naomi lost her, their husband. It was a bad time for, for the people who were, you know, in, you know, in, in Israel at the time. Amen? So this field, Boaz, this man Boaz, had favor on him. He had favor on him. His field and his place had favor on him. And then his people had, had favor on them. Amen? How, how does that relate to me and you today? Well, you know, um, you know I, I could say, well, you know, wherever God calls you to be, that's where the favor will be. You know, you need to find that out because that's important. Sometimes we think we need to go where the money is. You know, you go to one job and you go there because the money is there. No, no, no. Find the place where the favor is because where the favor is, God is. Come on. Where's the favor? Let me buy a favor. The presence of the Lord. Amen. Because where the favor is, you'll make money. Money will come. It's not the issue. You know, don't go where friends are. Go where God wants you to be. Amen? So that's favor. The favor is on a place. Place that's assigned for you. Somebody else may not want to go to this church, but you need to go to that church because that's where your favor, watch me, don't miss it, your favor is. Amen? And this is how we need to approach, approach these things. Favor is on a person, it's on a place, and it's on a people. Amen? Favor can cause problems. Favor, when it hits you, sometimes it reveals the people around you, how they react to you. You know, it's, it's a good thing when I can, you know, it's okay when you and I eat in the same party. I have a cut it in two and eat the same party and we pray and, you know, drink some water, some, some water from the pipe and say, praise the Lord. But let, let me get the party shop. You feel like, well, guess what? You're supposed to give a party every day and, and you live in the shop and, you're not supposed to do nothing, but you're supposed to take care of you because guess what? Our favor. No, it's my favor. And you need to be happy for me because your favor is coming. You can get yours. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Amen? Somebody type favor. In other words, if it is favor will reveal the hearts of the people around you. You will know who is really your friend that loves you to, to watch you see you get blessed and it's just okay with that because they are secured themselves in, in their God. F favor also reveals the enemies that are in you that needs to come out. You get favor, you change and you become an enemy of God. This favor takes you away from God so much that you don't know God anymore because you're just you know, walking in favor. So favor reveals things, reveals your friends, reveal you. Amen, somebody? Favor can cause giving itis. What does that mean? You get favor, just the gratitude of how you feel for to know, knowing that you, you know, don't deserve this, but that you get favor. You, you are, you know, just becomes a giving person. Or you just, be, you just want to give. And, and that, that's, that's a good thing. But here's one of the things I've learned about that, though. If you wasn't a good giving person before the favor, you're not going to be a giving person after the favor. <laughs> but if you are a giving person on a particular level, when the favor hits you, you just 
you just keep giving, you know. You know, so in other words, favor reveals the giving person. It exposes you. Some of us used to give quietly and little that we have, nobody would make, take notice of it. When favor drops on you, you just, because you're so grateful, the grateful person receives favor because the grateful person knows they don't deserve anything. So when they get, the first thing they think of is, man, who can I bless? Who can I bless? Amen. Because this favor thing, watch this, this favor thing, it's not something that you can earn or you deserve. It's something that's given to you. Amen? You can't buy it, you can't manipulate it. But guess what? You can attract it. What I mean? You can find yourself in proper alignment with God where because you are in proper alignment with God, favor who, the God of favor, favor does follow you. Prodigal of a song, he said, blessing and run me down. You must know that song, prodigal song. He says, blessing or, blessings are run me down. Well, guess what? Let me, let me, let me tag team in my bridging and just do the part two, which is really supposed to be part one. Blessings are run me down because I'm running down God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added. Right? And this is all probably God think. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he does. And other songs, he, he has revealed that. But I just want to remind somebody of that. Blessings are running me down because guess what? I'm, I'm in the fog. I'm in the favor of God. How am I in the favor of God? I'm with God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> yeah? So favor is, you know, running me down and jumping on me. Why? I'm attracting it. Why? Because I have God on, all over me. I'm adorned with the favor of God. How, how is God going to adorn me with his favor if he's not finding, um, finding uh, if he's not finding, what you call it now, pleasure in me? God is not going to adorn me with things that are of him unless he, he's pleased with me and he loves me. In fact, I have to belong to him first. The prodigal son's father didn't go out there and just pick a son and adorn him with the, with the coat and, the, and the, you know, he, he picked his son. Even if he was wrong and him coming back, he did not do it until he repented. He kept saying to the other son, your, your son, your, your, your son, your brother was dead. Don't miss that. He didn't say he was lost. He said he was dead. But no, he's alive. Listen to the, the word, wording of it. In other words, if my son is not with me, I consider him dead. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, somebody. Good God. Huh? So if you walk away from God and backslide, you're moving away from life into death. The father said he was dead. And now he's alive. Because when he turned around and started to come back towards the father, he started to walk back into life. So when I walk back into life, blessings run me down. My, my daddy come meet me and, and, and put on coat for me, and put on sandals for me. You understand what I'm saying? Bless God. Favor follows those who speak up. That's the second sermon that we did, which was on the, the favor attractions. Favor follows those who speak up. Um, Jesus, um, I'm so grateful that you are woken me up this morning and I can breathe and I'm so thankful. And then by the time you're done, oh, Jesus, it's about an hour. <laughs> you never, till the point of y'all forget where you're asking for. You know what, Jesus, I'm not even going to bother asking because guess what? I'm so grateful for being in your presence. Okay. And that's what you get, being in his presence. Great. No problem. That's good for heaven, for the assurance of being with him in, the, in, in everlasting to everlasting. But to establish the work of the hands, to fulfill destiny, come on, we need favor. And he tells you, your daddy tells you, ask whatever you wish. Delight yourself in me and ask whatever you wish and I, it shall be given to you. Amen, somebody? So those who, 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 who you know, understand favor are people who speak up. 
Father, I bless you, Lord, I love you. Watch this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That will be done on earth at, until it is in heaven, right? What's the next one? Give us this day. Somebody say ask. So why are you afraid to ask? They, they asked Jesus, how do we pray? He said, okay, I'm going to teach you. This is how you pray. Amen? Am I good? Praise the Lord. We're back. Bless God. So favor follows those who speak up. Favor follows those who speak up. Amen? Hallelujah. Favor also follows persons who love and serve people. Boaz found Ruth, and when he found her, she asked him. So, hold on and on. <clears throat> I really like it. the slim ways. But I told you, why are why, 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 why you treating me so? Can I paraphrase? Ruth looked on Boaz and said, Boaz, <laughs> you're cute, you know? Like you. But so, so how you like me? Why are you like me? Yeah, check me, sir. Uh, and the legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a good, good body. Come on, talk to Pastor. Come on, work with me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> Can I talk truth in 2020? What did Ruth say? Ruth said, Why, why are you showing me such favor? Oh, you so nice to me. And the big man said, You know, I'm a nice to you. And then, your, and then your cute face and your cute waist. Hmm? And then your tight up clothes or your jeans. And then your, you know, your hoggers, but your body hogger, or whatever them call it. He said, the reason why the city, you know, I give you a favor is because I love all your treat, your mother-in-law. Love all your take care of people. Let me ask a question. What will your boys say when he see you? Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, what will your Ruth say when she see you? Would you be a man that own a field? Would you be a man that's working? What I mean by own a field? I'm not talking about a physical business. I'm talking about a man of destiny, a man that's going somewhere. Or is it all about your looks? Come on, can we talk truth in it? Can we just, can we just talk, talk the thing straight? What is going to make the hookup? Is the hookup going to be based on physical stuff? Or is it going to be based on character? Is it going to be based on... Because the, a certain character attracts favor. Guys, let's not be too spiritual about it. It's real. It's spirit and it is natural stuff. Amen. They go together. Somebody say amen. Type amen. Type favor. Just give me a big shout of favor. Amen. So I said, favor. Hallelujah. Amen. Favor follows those who serve people. Favor follows those who, who live on the down low. What do I mean by that? Humility. They are, they are humble people. They live on the down on, on the low. I mean, they're, sorry, prayerful people. They pray and they, they, um, they are people who keep their, their, their hearts tuned to God. No boasting, no, not trying to impress people. They must humble themselves. Favor follows those who are teachable. I didn't say this last, last time. Favor follows those who are teachable. Big difference because you may look at me and say, teachable isn't humble. Not necessarily. Here's why. You can be humble because you'll, you'll serve, you'll do physical work and you'll serve and you'll, you're humble, you're quiet, you're humble. Okay. But teachable now challenges you to move from where you are at to sometimes do things that you don't agree to. Yet, but you're willing to say, okay, I get it. There was a humble man who was serving the Lord called um, Zachariah. 
when he was challenged by the angel, he said to the angel, um, how, can this, how can this be? He questioned the angel. Mary's response when the angel challenged her was different. She said to the angel, you know, how, how are you going to do that? In other words, I, I'm, I'm a virgin. I don't, I don't know a man. One questioned the authority. The other gave, gave questioned the, the, the method. Big difference. One said, yeah, I'll serve. I'm humble and I'm served. That's why I'm a priest. Teachable? No, I know how to do this. And I know life and I know things. I'm, who are you to give a command question? Come tell me something I don't understand. Who are you? The other one, Mary, was teachable because she said, okay, I don't even know who you are. I'm not, I can't even figure out all of this. But guess what? My Lord, if you say so, be it unto me as you say. Because teachable means now it is putting you past what you know. Will you, are you willing to submit? There's a slight, there's a correlation, you know, because you have to be humble to be teachable. But in the same token, teachability carries you a little bit on a different road, a slightly different road. That we as Christians sometimes think we are teachable, but we're not. And then we'll, we'll be fighting and say, but I'm a humble person. Humble to us being quiet, not argumentative. You know, we're not, you know, going to, you know, be defiant. But we'll say yes, and we'll do it, but we're grumbling. Are we find our way out of it? And we don't walk away learning the lesson. Big difference. I hope this is blessing somebody. Amen? Amen? And by the way, humility and, and being teachable is also different from submitting to spiritual authority. You see, submitting to spiritual authority, which is what, what I mentioned in the, in the last time we shared, this is the part three, with um, spiritual authority now is when we, we you go now, like I said, to the teachability side of things. Because, like I said, you can be humble in church, serving, or you're there, you come to the church, you're tied, you sit, you're good. But if pastor ever said anything to you, him cross the line. You can preach to me, keep a church that I, that I can come to, because I need a place for my family to come and worship the Lord and to be and to clock and say, you know, put on, check out on the clock and say, yeah, man, we have been to church, but our family is good. But I, uh, but I ain't submitting to your authority. It's Junior that, you know, Junior can preach, man. Yeah, man, I'm good. But the gift, you can see it. But it's Junior. You can't talk to me. Tell me somewhere or make me go. Whoa, how dare you? I'm waiting on you. Come on, talk to me. Amen? Well, guess what? Favor follows people who are like that. Pe favor follows people who are teachable, who submit to spiritual authority. Let me stay here for a minute. I was talking to, to the guys on Sunday, to the church on Sunday. But if you go back and you watch, all of our sermons are on YouTube, Insta um, Instagram, and um, Facebook. Amen. You can see all the sermons. We can, you can go back months and, and, and watch the different sermons. It would surely bless you. Send it to a friend, you know, and, 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 and bless them. Amen. Um, the spiritual authority thing about, you know, I, I shared with somebody, I, I shared on Sunday and then somebody came to me after and asked me about it because I was telling the, the congregation that when I was with Bishop Tony Miller and, and, Pete, and Bishop John Gordon and people like that, when, when I was serving them, I served them with three things. I served them with my resources. I served them with my talents, my gifts, and I served them with my speech, right? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. If you, you cannot expect life from your pastor if you're chatting behind him, your back. Or if you hear somebody destroying your pastor and you say nothing and sit there and, and entertain it. Come on, talk to me. My speech, even when I saw things that were not, I don't, didn't agree with, I had to learn how to sometimes hold my mouth and say, okay, the man of God is doing this way or, or did that. 
God first and only is his judge. David, David did it to Saul. There were times when he would cover Saul. One man came and said, cut off Saul's head. And, 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 and David looked at him and said, were you comfortable to touch the man of God? And the man was telling David how, like in other words, see, they killed the wicked man. And David said, the wicked man, he belongs to God. That's God's job. What do you speak with your tongue? Do you tear down your pastor? And that's how I served him. That's how I honored him. I had to honor them that way. Was I perfect? No, I was not perfect. I made mistakes and I learned. But, my, but the point I'm making is I had to learn and develop that type of mindset to honor them with my speech. I honored them with my gifts. I knew if I, I, knew I was a singer, I knew I was, um, you know, I, you know, you know, counseled people very well, that kind of a thing. And I could preach and all that stuff. So I was ready to go at any time. Anytime Pastor Chuck would say to me, say, Junior, you're up this week, this week to preach. Yes, sir. And that means Trudy just knows, oh boy, I put on the tea because he's going to be up late in the night. In, I would love for him to be with me, spend time with me, spend time with the kids. But Pastor Chuck has called him. He's ready to go. Anytime. I had sermons waiting for him to call me. And I'd watch what he was preaching. And I would, you know, be ready as a soldier. Just hurry up and wait. Ready to serve. Amen, somebody? And I would serve them. I would serve them with all of my gifts. They needed somebody to come and help them lift up some things. Out of it. Ready. Ready. They need me to, to sow. Or I, or I just looked. And, and here's the next one. This is the one that challenged me. Because I would look at them sometimes. So like, I would look at like a Bishop Tony Miller. who Bishop Tony Miller wasn't broke. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, let me just leave that. Down. He wasn't broke. He was blessed he was he was when he said he walked in the favor i mean i literally there were times when i literally saw it happen where blessings would just come and drop in him lap and i'm like oh my god now watch this this is where i got challenged in my mind i was like but he's blessed why should i sow why should i take my thousand dollars seed and give to him in my money because in our minds we want to say i'm gonna sow into him that person's life and when i do that it improves they went from broke almost being kicked out of them house to them them all right or them never have any food i give them food and you feel good that's charity that's good but when god tell you to sow a seed it's not for you to judge the land to see if it is righteous or not before you sow it you don't know what god is doing that's not my job god is already rich okay that's good style that's why he's rich don't you want good soil to sow into so you wait your seed can come back so here's the good soil what the start the soil must look pop down then you sow, then you sow into it that's if the soil is good then it will look good come on somebody i had to learn that and change my mind because the world will tell me yeah man all the preacher want is to just take your money and be rich and in my mind i'm like no i'm making any more richer but that's not the thing. Don't look for the riches. Look for the anointing. Because the same man that I would sow my money into, trust me, I'm telling you, I would see that man studying the word, getting into the word, praying, crying out to God. So when him come and deliver the word, the presence of the Lord is so rich and so thick. If I can sow it and make, lift up him hands and make him life a little easier, so I can spend more time in before, in, before the Lord. Oh my God, you better believe I'm, I'm trying to find a seed to, to bless him with. Come on, somebody. He belongs to God. He's walking before God. Good soil. I hope this is blessing somebody. Amen. Amen. It's best thing in this type of favor. Where are my peeps? Where are my people? They're here? Go ahead, big man. Let them in. Let them in. Who's, who's coming? Teresa, where are you? Bless God. The sister in. Where is she? She's here? She's coming, she's coming, she's coming. Bless God. Let me pause for a minute. Hello, you there, Teresa? There you go. The mic's on. 
Do you have a question for me? Yeah, I was asking, well, my question is, um, when you're walking in the favor of God, um, can you still, are you still open to attacks from the enemy? And if so, how do you, oh, how do you deal with it? Okay, like I was sharing last week, um, like I was sharing on, on, on um, Sunday, like sometimes the enemy will come into the fog and he's the one who's stepping on you and keeping you down before you move, you know, and that kind of a thing. The enemy, the enemy is a part of the, of the, okay, the enemy coming in and touching you is a part of God's whole movement in it because God, God is the all-knowing God, knows what the enemy is going to do before he does it. So if he allows something to happen, right, then God is working it for your, all those things for your good. So what you have to do, I always come back to the scripture of submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. One of my favorite, James 4, I think, 7, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, it's James, though, but I don't know, somewhere around there. Is it James? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> the correct past, I'm, 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 I'm teachable. <laughs> Amen. But, but um, it, um, in that scripture, it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So, what I do more, more than anything else is just while I'm walking towards God, I'm dealing with the fog, you know, he, because the favor is on me. Of, of course, this devil who watches now lost the fog, lost the favor, right? He, he's not getting any more favor. Mm. He's done, right? He, it makes him jealous to see mm. oh, how my God loves me and what my God adorns me with. It's, if you think about it from the, the perspective of Joseph and his brothers, they hated him. Why? Because the father who speak of loving him, that kind of a thing. So even Joseph, who the father loved and was just basking in the father's love, you know, you know, had to, to, to deal with his brothers like attacking him, right? So we as believers are going to deal with, with, with the, um, the, the attacks of the enemy. As a matter of fact, one of my points in last week was, was those of us, the favor follows those who are not afraid of a fight. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have to understand that to fight the enemy is a part of what you do. Mm -hmm. right? But here's how you fight the enemy. You don't physically fight him. You don't get consumed with it. You learn his, his wiles and his ways. You see what he's doing and you discern what he's doing so you can move in strategy and move in wisdom. Mm -hmm. But you stay focused on the Lord. Mm -hmm. The God of the fog also know that, that the enemy would come. So mm -hmm. every step is of the righteous man is ordered. So you, know, you, pay, you pay attention to the Lord who directs his steps and says, the enemy is coming after you this way. Don't move. Stay right here. Don't, don't go ahead, ahead yet because the enemy can come and try and cross, cross path. So you, you, you pull back and you wait. Don't go to that bank. Don't do that because they're, they're trying to trap you. Or this hit you get with the car mashing up is a hit from the enemy. But don't, don't panic. Just relax. Recoup and come again. I'm teaching you tenacity. I'm teaching you you know how to be you know you know to be strong i'm teaching you how to not let these things bother you. whatever god is showing you the enemy is going to be a part of the journey mm -hmm. thou preparest at the table before me in the presence of my enemy it's, it's you have to settle in your mind before you come into this fight call life this walk of life to know say as a matter of fact I've, the more mature i get this is what i do i'm walking with god and i'm like this okay where is he where is he? I'm aware that the enemy can show up at any time. I, mm -hmm. I don't live by it, you know. Mm -hmm. Unless I get distracted, unless I get, you know, um, paranoid and just don't walk in the joy of the Lord. But in the same token, I would be, I would be naive and 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 not a good, not a good, not a good soldier to, to not be aware of the enemy's presence because he's he's still here. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I do a lot is to pray over my children and cover them, and you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and discern certain things you know they, but my children want to go to this place or that place and I'm like you know, so I'm not afraid to be I'm, I'm not embarrassed to look at people so I get back to you what does that mean I'm going to pray mm -hmm. I said Lord what is going on here and the Lord said no because that's an attack from the enemy that's a set up I'm like okay or if I just don't feel the peace I just go you know what no mm -hmm. you know and I will learn and go wow the enemy was you know waiting around the corner and that you know mm -hmm. You know that kind of a thing. So it's it's an ongoing it's an ongoing 
you know, walk where these, these um, what you call it, these um, variables are all, all in the mix. Mm -hmm. And he, Satan is one of them. You know? Okay. That's part of the thing. Good okay. to see you, girl. Bless you. All right. Thanks, Pastor. Have Appreciate Monday. that. Yeah, man. All right. Take care. Anybody else coming in? Who's coming in? I want to hear from you guys. Come on. Don't make Pastor talk out the whole time. Come on. Come on. Come on in. Who's next? How do you manage? Somebody sent this in. Am I reading something right? Andrew. Yeah. How do you manage the bad reaction from others when you have gotten your favor? <laughs> and out of what may be considered to be selfishness from others, they treat you as outcast. All right. Andrew, listen to me very carefully. Now. My wife used to ask me this question. I'm just concerned of what they, they will think. And I always ask her, who are they? Can we go look for them and go them yard and find them? And I'm probably sure that if you find them, they're probably then thinking about you. They probably thought about it for a minute or two and then they moved on. Point I'm making is you cannot, okay, you're aware of it, but you don't live by it. You cannot let other people's concern bother you. Let me share this with you. Very interesting. The disciples came to Jesus and said, your mother is outside. Your mother and your sisters and brothers are outside. And Jesus said to them, who is my mother and my brothers? And then he said a very interesting thing. He said, it is those who are of my spirit. He did not say those who follow me. He said, it is those who are of my spirit. In other words, I only trust those who are operating by my spirit. And the minute they don't operate by my spirit, I call it what it is. This is the same Jesus who looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. Then when he came back in the spirit, looked at him and said, do you love me? Three times. And, said, and, and restored him and showed him love. What am I saying? We don't live by people's reactions. We live by their spirit. And if their spirit is of, of Jesus, we show love. If it is not of Jesus, you have to use wisdom now and know how to move. Even if that person is close to you, even if it is your mother, there's many believers who have given their life to Jesus and lost mother and father. And I'm not talking physically, I'm talking about losing them in terms of the alliance, the, the, the connection. And in giving your life to Jesus, you have to be prepared to know that even your enemy could be a Judas, who you live amongst, whose feet you wash, who you pour into every day for two and a half years. And you have to settle that issue. That's why Jesus has to be priority. And you're, like Peter, you're willing to say, where else can I go? Who's the, you're the only one with words of everlasting life. In other words, if I lose you, I lose everything. So if I have to lose a brother or a sister or a father, I'm gonna, it's tough, I don't want to, but if that's the case, I'm good with that. So that's how you have to look at it. That's just, the, that's just the reality of Christianity. Another scripture, Jesus says, I have come to divide son from father, to put against mother versus daughter. He didn't come purposely to divide people, but truth has a way of letting people have to choose where they, where they, where they stand. And in somebody's heart, when, when favor comes upon another person, it shows what's going on in your heart. I have a two choices. You can repent. Because I'm, I'm guilty. I've, I've seen where favor come on people and I go, what? God, so you lick your head. You don't know them. Because I, I don't know people. I know everything. What do you know? I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I have to say, why is me? That, that's going on in me. Why would I be jealous of somebody else's blessings when I belong to the God who has endless blessings that me and everybody upon the earth can't do, can do it? Just wait my turn. Just, just pay attention to what he's doing with me. Amen. I hope that blesses you. Hope that blesses you. Anybody else? Where's my people? Come on. Talk to Pastor. Amen. Let me just finish up. Finish up this. Uh, jump on in. I'll stop as, as soon as I hear from you. As soon as you come in, I'll, I'll stop. But favor follows faithfulness. It's another one. 
People are, when people are faithful, let your word be your word. Integrity is key. When you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. If they can't, they come back and say, you know, I did say I was going to try and do this, but guess what? Something has happened. Or, or when I think about it, I really can't. I'm very sorry. In other words, be, be faithful. Be, be, be transparent. Be, be um, integrous. Let your word be the most um, valuable thing you have. When they hear your name, they say, yeah, man, that person. I'm learning to do that because here's my problem. I used to be somebody who don't like confrontation. So if I know me, you might get into a place where you might be disappointed in me or have an argument or I'll let you down or you know, I just don't want to tell you the truth. I'll, I'll try and avoid it. But avoiding don't make it better. So I've had to learn to come to people and say, you know what, you know, I don't like that. And when you did that, or I know I said this to you, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. And I've had to learn it's okay to disappoint or it's okay to have a confrontation. Confrontation, confrontation is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. As long as it's done in love. Amen? Because that leaves the relationship in a better place. That makes your name more richer. And that's who, that, those are the people who favor follow. If you cannot be trusted, if you in, in, don't have any integrity, God's favor is not going to be upon you. I want to soak like a bit. Come on. Favor follow those who are expectant. You have to be expectant. Prepare yourself. Get ready. Steve Harvey has this, um, this, this testimony he gives about um, you know, telling him his mother he wants a car, he wanted a, a new car. And his mother kept saying to him, well, what are you doing with the, you know, what are you doing with, with the garage? And he's like, what are you talking about? What garage? And she said, There's something in the garage you need to do. And he's like, well, well, I'm looking, I'm working hard on saving up to get this new car, to get this new car. And she said, what are you doing with the, with the garage? And he didn't get it. And after a while, it, the light bulb came on and he was like, because his old car was just parked on blocks in the garage. He got it out, cleaned it up, take out the car, throw it away, and left it open. Cleaned it up. And that's when the money started to flow for him to get the new car. You have to be expectant. You have to show God that what you said, you trust him to do. Expectancy shows God your trust. You speaking it is one thing. That's good. But your, your expectancy speaks of your trust. Speaks of your settled response, your foundation. It's, it, it's faith on display. Come on. Expectancy is faith on display. It, re it really speaks loud to God. Amen, somebody? Favor follow those who love to get pregnant. Favor follow those who love to get pregnant. What do I mean? People are not afraid to birth new things, do new things. The last pastor in my family was the great, my great grandfather, the Reverend Theodore Lancelot Tucker. Amen. He was the pastor of a church in Stony Hill, St. Jude's Church, I think, I'm not mistaken. This is Garvey them time, Marcus Garvey time. He, him and Marcus Garvey were friends. And the next pastor in my family since that pastor what am I saying I thought I was going to be the singer God said no I'm going to birth something back that's never seen for, for generations all the men before you and here I am now doing something different because this is what God said and I had to go okay Lord whatever you said Favor follows that. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't play it safe. Be you. Be you meaning be what God called you to be. Birth it. If you birth it, God will cover it. God will provide for it. Because favor is expensive. Give God something to spend it on. What I mean by favor is expensive. It costs Jesus' his life. Jesus died so that you and I can have favor. So stop giving God small little things where, where the world can do 
uh, you can do with your own skill. So big God, JB said it, enlarge my territory, you know, open up, open up, you know, you know, bless me, change my life, Lord. They say I was born in a people that are born from sorrow, pain. And they want to name me that and, 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 and lock me into that destiny. Lock me into that DNA, identity. That's not who I am. Change me like what you, 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 what you did for, for, for Jacob. Oh God of Israel. That's what he called out to. Oh God of Israel. You changed Israel from Jacob to Israel. It's interesting, the covenant says, he's, he, they call him the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But when Jabez called out, he didn't say, oh, God of Jacob. He said, oh, God of Israel. In other words, I'm not going to call, call him by the Jacob name. I'm going to call him by what you're changing because that's what I want for me. Woo! I feel my strength. Jesus. I love the word. You know, I tell you, I love the word. You love the word? The word is awesome, man. The word better than any movie, I'm telling you. Word better than songs, music. I love God's word. Who's coming on? Anybody coming on? Who's there? Who's, who's somebody sending off? There's another, um, there's another um, I'm not seeing it. How do you manage the bad reaction from others? That's all I'm seeing. You got something else on me? There's another question? You want to send it to my phone? Okay, how, how do I stay attentive in the fog? Okay. Sad to say, but to really answer that, I would advise you to do that before the fog. You have to learn to develop a life that is one that listens to God. And hear him on a regular basis. In other words, not because there's a fog. No, I'm going to be more attentive. I'm going to start being attentive. I'm already attentive. Because number one, whether in a fog or not in a fog. Whether in a, in a, in, Paul says, I've learned to abound and abase. In other words, I've learned to do it with and without. And in those two times, I'm still in front of God. I still love the Lord. And I'm still pursuing him. So that pattern of being attentive has to be learned, I would advise, before fogs. So when fog comes, you go, oh, I'm in a fog. Okay, get it. All right, favor is coming upon me. But, you know, my devotion time, my prayer time, my, my dependency on you, Lord, is, is still there. You know? So when the fog comes, you're like, okay, this is good. What are, we doing? what are we doing with this? You're blessing me because you want me to do what? Okay, I hear you, Lord. I hear you. This is for me to be refreshed. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate this vacation. Okay, this is to give to so and so, so into that person. Okay, Lord. Save this. Okay, Lord. I hear you. I hear you. Don't buy that, that car or that business because that's a burden. I hear you, Lord. Cold, I'll tell you when. Okay, Lord. What do you want me to do with this favor? Because you've been attentive before when there was no favor. When it was just a regular day, you go, Lord, I bless you. Anything you're saying to me today, I'm here, Lord. You're number one in my life, right? From one to ten. Well, you understand? Yeah, that has to be, I would advise, that has to be developed before you come in. And when you come in, just stay focused. Just, you know, yet you get favor, yes, but don't, don't give up your devotion time. Not because you have favor, that means you know, the work, when, or what you're building or what you're doing can take up more of your time. That you cut off your devotion time. Because that means no, you start to worship the fog. That means your hand has moved from his face to, to his hands. Your eyes, I mean, have moved from his face to his hands. So you have to learn how to keep focus on the Lord, regardless of what's going on. Fog or no fog. And to keep focus means your devotion time, your, your, your prayer time, your worship time. Coming to church. I, I, I've seen it with saints. They, 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 they come to church because what? Something is, they may not struggle. They may not fight. They're in a fight. She's in a fight. They're in a fight. So the run, come church. Come church. Get the breakthrough. You don't see them again.
Come on, somebody. Achi Kelly. The Kelly family misses the Tucker family. And I'm so blessed to see your family doing God's work and speaking his word all over the nation. There is great favor on Pastor Junior and Pastor Trudy. But let me tell you something, man. I love this family. This is Angie Kelly. They're from Oklahoma. Her, her um, mother, in, mother in love, not her mother in love, mother in love. Oh my God, opened her home. This is the lady who, when I, if you've ever heard me testify, when I reached to Oklahoma, I didn't have a house because the, the, the home that we was closing on, they, the, 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 the people uh, last minute canceled on us. And when I got there, I, my, my, my moving truck was coming with all of my stuff. And I arrived at her door with, uh, let me see, four kids at the time, or th three children and Bruce, my nephew was with me. And when we got there, the <laughs> Cherry Kelly looked at me and she said, well, Junior, um, I don't have your house. I'm so sorry. I don't have your house. But guess what? That's what God, that's what, that's why, I guess that's why God gave me a four bedroom house. So come on and you can live with me until you find your house. I've never met this lady in my life. Somebody shall favor. That's favor. I'm on the street. I drive from Florida to Oklahoma. That's middle of America. That's like two, two days drive or three days drive. I'm on somebody. And when I got there, I had no house. And the lady looked at me and went, Junior, it's nice to meet you. Come on in, I have a four bedroom house. I'm standing right there at, on a, in, in a, at, at her door. And she takes me in and I met Angie Kelly. That's how I met Angie Kelly and her husband. Awesome people, beautiful people. And God just blessed us to, to know each other and God moved in our lives and you know, just did some things in their lives and in their marriage and in their hearts and stuff. And, Man, they're just so blessed right now. It's just, it's just awesome to see the favor of God upon their family. You know? And, um, I, you know, I, I really miss you guys. I really miss you guys, the Kelly family. Give my love to everybody in Oklahoma. One day, I, I, I know one day I'll be back to, to you know, to, to hug you guys and share and, you know, just, just, you know, just love on each other. But I bless God for that favor. That was an awesome favor on Trudy and I having met those people, Cherry Kelly and her family and her entire family, the Kelly family, bless them, Lord. Who's, who's coming? Somebody else is coming? Would I like Angie Kelly to, to log in? Absolutely. Can she log in? Of course. She's there? Okay. Anybody who's, who else is there? Not bad reaction. Anybody else is there? I'm looking. You log in on me. Okay. Anybody else? Men of God, where are you? Come on. No perfect people. Where are you? Amen. Let me look and see if I fit. Did I finish my notes? Okay. Did I finish my notes? Favor. Favor follows those who are not afraid of a fight. I said that already. Favor follows those who cry out. Favor follows those who cry out. Jabez cried out and God changed his life. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're past our time. We're past our time. But it's been good. This, this series continues on Sunday, uh, 1030 at church. We're going to talk some more about the favor of God. Because you just have to come and, and, and tune in and see which dimension of it we're going to go into. But I just believe we're, we're going to have be on this favor of God for a while until God says stop. Um, you know, because I, I mean, he's been talking to me about different areas of it, different aspects of it. I've been talking to the other pastors, and they've just been sharing with me what what this you know this teaching has been doing to them. And um, it's, it's it's a it's a it's a God's word is like an ocean, man. I mean, you could just jump in it and just you know just be saturated from so many different dimensions and levels. And you know, I just want to just make sure you are, you are blessed with the fullness of, of God's word in this season. You know, God is talking to us about the favor. And um, yeah, you know, we're, you know, we're just going to keep preaching it until God says, okay, next subject, you know. But don't forget, sorry, don't forget, eight, uh, 1030, um, we, are on, um, we are on YouTube, Instagram, IG, and um, Facebook. We, we sign on at 1030 this coming Sunday, one service, 10.30.
But people have been coming. People have been coming to church. And them calling and then book them seats and they're right there in the service. They, oh, I'm telling you, it's a different. Let me tell you something. I, and I love the comfort of this computer thing. You can sit down in your, your house and you have a way, you know, you just left in, you, know, you have a dress in a particular way, you have your coffee, and it's very convenient. Don't get me wrong. Oh, you can even pause, go to the bathroom, come back and watch. It's got it. But there is nothing to compare with it. being physically in the presence of the saints. Don't get me wrong. We, we, uh, we, um, abide by all the rules, you know, six feet away from each other, the mask, all of that stuff, with sanitizing, all of that, we, we don't play with that, amen? We do not mess with that. That's the laws of the land, so, and we're to obey the laws of the land, and we will do that. For, we are Christians, we will do that. Amen, somebody? However, however, I'm telling you, guys, I know it's convenient for you to be at home, but trust me, it is something else when you are in the presence of God, and you're feeling that tangible touch of the Holy Spirit when saints touch and agree in spirit. It is something as people have been calling and booking their seats. Call and book your seat from now for Sunday coming. Trust me, we limited seating because we can't, you know, we have to really abide by the rules in terms of spacing. So bring her on. So yeah, you know, 10 30 this Sunday. Oh my goodness. Hello, sweetie. Um, you have your mic. Open your mic. Open your mic. All right. Are you there? Oh, my God. It is so good to see you. Is that, who's, that, who's that? Who's that guy? What is, he doing, what is he doing so close to you? Who's that guy? Who's that slim, who's that slim guy? You can dig the, no. I'm a, <laughs> I don't I'm even know. You're looking good, man. Oh, Off, it, officer, should I say officer? Yes. That's how, that's how long I haven't seen you. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> Mark. You know. It's so good to see you, man. It's good to see you too. I love we you, hear, bro. We hear you all the time. I know you do. I see you log on and I'm like, my first question is, do they understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I knew I lost you a couple of times, didn't I? <laughs> Some days, I'm telling you, I listened to a lady from from Africa. Yeah. And sometimes I don't know what she's saying, but I roll with it until I catch it. I understand. I get you. I get you. I get you. Man, it is so good to see you guys. How are the, well, I can't say kids anymore. How are the big people? Right. <laughs> well, they're doing great. And um, Jonathan's almost, well, is he 19 now? Yeah. Jonathan. Jonathan's 19. I think he's 19. He just turned 19. And then we, yeah, Abigail's almost 10. He's working at the sheriff's office, but he, he's a detention officer in the jail. Wow. Now he started at the fire department here in town. He's a volunteer firefighter. And he's talking about going back to school to get his EMT. Yeah. Wow. Things are going great. He wants to be a hero. He is. <laughs> it's yes. in him. It's in him. Yes. It's in him. Yes. It and is. Abby, Abigail? Yes. Yes. Abigail, I'm, Mark, I'm going to remind you this now. Abigail is the one when I said to her, there's another baby. She cussed me out. <laughs> she told me off, Mark. No, I'm not. No, no. Are you talking about I'm not having no more baby? No, no. no. I, said, Abby, come here. I said, woman, I'm a prophet. I'm done. <laughs> you remember that? You remember that, Angie? Yes, I remember that. And look at this. Beautiful. How are you? This is Pastor Junior Checker. It's a long time friend. He's a wonderful man. Come I'll have to you. show you a video later. <laughs> uh, uh, don't you do that to the child. <laughs> Uh, my how's mommy um she's doing great she's doing great so she's you know in the city and wow. selling real estate and doing great i'm sure so, and i need to I, come back one day and see you guys man. i really do you need to you need to we're about to have a spare bedroom <laughs> hey <laughs> jonathan's room is is being switched over gotcha yeah you'll have to come visit the farm 
a farm. Yeah. We have a farm. We have a farm. We have oh, goats and chickens, chickens and dogs. Baby, baby chickens. <laughs> oh my God. Layla would love that. Yeah. Layla, Layla is the one that was born in Oklahoma. She, 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 she wants to be an animal, um, like what do you call it, that takes, rescues animals. Oh. So we're, we're telling, okay, be a vet and then you can have your own animal. Yeah. She's like, okay, no problem. Yeah. Animals. Yeah. That's what, we're, that's what we're thinking. And you don't know Judah. Judah's the son that we had after we left Oklahoma. Right. Well, you had you had Judah here. No, we had we had Layla here. We Layla had, in Oklahoma. Layla oh, the, that's right. Okay. Yeah, the boy. Was. Every every place we go, we have another baby. <laughs> right. Are you moving again? No. <laughs> absolutely not. And I'm done. I know. I, hey, I'm with you, bro. <laughs> I get it. Thank you. We only have two more done. I love you guys, man. Well, we, we love, love you, you too. too. Please keep in touch. Yes. Dr. Trudy is in, um, she's in Florida. That's why she's not with me today. She's in Florida um, and she'll be back soon. Yeah, I will okay. let you know. Send me your numbers. Send me your phone numbers. Okay? Yeah. Send yeah. me your phone numbers. We yeah, I'll, you want me to message through Facebook? Anyone. Messenger? Okay. Anyone. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Sorry. Yeah, well, but my request. Guys, my recovery, I wanted to tell you, um, yes. you know, I had brain surgery. Yes. It was a miracle. The whole tumor came out in one piece. My God. Look at never, that. Yeah. They yeah. Never, the, it was so funny because the doctor said they never come out in one piece, blah, blah, blah. They, yes. they expect so many hours in surgery and we were expecting a long surgery. He got done and like, it was no time. It seemed like an hour maybe. Wow. And then when he's telling me that he said, he said, well, I, when I opened the skull and took the little piece of skull off, he said that the, the tumor, as I was cutting, he said the tumor popped up through the hole. And so he said, I cut, was cutting around it and it just started laying itself outside. That's him and God working. He doesn't even mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. That's it what, was, my God. It was a miracle from the day, from day one when the seizure Ooh, happened. Thank you, Jesus. So it was awesome. Oh my, that's awesome, Angie. That's so good to see. You're looking strong. I, I was back at work two weeks after brain surgery. Jesus, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. sometimes we still don't understand what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand what she's saying. We all do. We're okay. We, you need to catch up. <laughs> I love the hair haircut. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> It's actually growing quite fast. So. I told her the other day, she reminded me of Rizzo off of Greece. Yes, she does. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Don't you agree with that? No, I'm, I'm liking his haircut, too. Oh, I know. The, the no hair haircut? Yes. I, I didn't say that. I'm just saying I like the haircut. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. That's horrible. <laughs> Why don't you just the, do the whole thing? This is... You know, just... The computer screen makes it look like there's less there than there actually is. <laughs> Mark, there's less there than there actually is. <laughs> I've got more, I swear. I love, you guys. I love you guys. We God bless you. you. Thank you for letting us zoom with you for a little bit. Oh, that's, that's great, man. I'm sure somebody was blessed by that. Oh, I'm yeah. blessed by it. Oh, well, good to see you guys. We are too. We are too. Love you guys. We'll be in touch, all right? Okay, Tell love you Trudy, too. we said hello. I yeah. will. I will. Bless you guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Wow. Okay. Guys, wow. That was a blessing. Those people and I, we spent a couple of years together in Oklahoma and um, we were now serving with me and Pastor Trudy. Layla was born there and um, they know our kids and you know, this is family to us. We've been in touch ever since and, you know, just, you know, just, I watched them. I watched God go work in their marriage and bring them together and, and um, you know, taking her through surgery. And then she had a tumor in her brain. And God, you know, as you've heard his testimony. Our God is real, guys. He's real. Favor. That's favor, man. Some people don't make it through those things. And God just, you know, favor her and she's still here, you know. That's favor. So favor is about, and then it's not just money. Favor. Um, you, you've seen it. You, you're seeing it in different ways. And I hope you're being blessed by, by what God is speaking to us. Grab a hold of it. Believe it. Just take a chance and just believe it. Just, just you know, don't try to figure it out too much. Don't try to think about it too tough. Just say, okay, Lord, like Mary, just say, okay, I don't understand what you're saying, but beat unto me. His favor, yes, sir? Favor, Lord, Lord, Lord. 
right? See in church on, on Sunday. God bless you. Tell a friend, tell a friend, you know, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But also WhatsApp and tell somebody about church and tell somebody about what we're doing, and what, what God is doing through us. Amen. And we'll see you come Sunday. God bless you. Take care. Be safe. All right. Bye-bye.